Hello everyone, how's it going and welcome to today's Wild Rift guide. In today's guide, we're going to be taking a deeper look at Alistar. Alistar is a tank support. He excels at engaging with his heavy crowd control and being a frontline tank for his team. When playing Alistar, the most important thing you need to know is his headbutt pulverize combo. This is a combination of his second ability and his first ability, which we'll explain in a little bit more detail later in the video. Headbutt Pulverize is Alistar's main engage tool. You can use this as early as level 2 to jump on the enemy champions and crowd control them so the rest of your team can follow up and do a lot of damage. Taking a quick look through the build, as mentioned already, Alistar is a tank support, so you want to build items that give you health, armor, and magic resist that allow you to be that frontline tank. Dead Man's Plate is still a really, really strong item in the game. It's been nerfed a few times, but it's still really, really strong. Gives you health, armor, allows you to get the movement speed as well, which is quite good with Alistar. That means you can easily land your combo, allows you to do a little bit more damage as well. Zeke's Convergence gives you armor and magic resist. You also got the passive as well, which is really nice, so when you cast your ultimate, you get a slow around you and allows your allies to deal more damage as well which is very very helpful most of the time for boots you want to go for plated steel caps you can go for mercury treads if you're against a lot of crowd control as well but you've got things like hunter titan which will help with that so most of the time you go plated steel caps then for the boots upgrade you go protobelt protobelt is like another flash in a way so you can protobelt forward try and use your pulverize and use your head bar to try and knock um, enemy champions into your team Force of Nature as well is kind of your magic resist item, health magic resist, and it also gives you movement speed as well, which is really, really nice. Thorn Mail. Now, with Thorn Mail, you don't have to complete the item early on if you don't want to. Um, you can just build the Bramble Vest part of Thorn Mail. Uh, this allows you to... Um, apply Grievous Wounds when people attack you. Most of the time, if you're against a lot of healing, you just want to build the Bramble Vest early on and then kind of complete the build as it is uh, shown at the moment. And then you complete Thornmail later on. But Thornmail is still a really, really good item because when you immobilize the enemy champions, it inflicts more Grievous Wounds as well. So easily from your headbutt, pulverize combo, things like that. Randuin's Omen as well as the last item just reduces damage from crit as well. Gives you more health, more armor. As you can see, just all tank items in the end. That's kind of the go-to with Alistar. Aftershock, just the best room for Alistar. When you hit your headbutt pulverize combo, uh, allows you to gain you know, bonus armor, bonus magic resist, and you also deal a little bit of damage as well after a few seconds. Weakness as well, as mentioned already, immobilizing, really, really easy for Alistar. So when you do immobilize uh, an enemy champion, they take 5% more damage. Hunter Titan is there to allow you to get more tenacity. Sometimes with Alistar, tenacity can be a little bit of a, uh, a problem. And sometimes crowd control can be a, pro uh, be a bit of a problem. You have your ultimate, which can cancel out crowd control. But most of the time, you don't want to use this just to stop any sort of crowd control. You want to use this when you actually engage. So the extra tenacity and extra health does come in handy. And they have Pack Hunter as well for more movement speed when you're near allied champions. And then you get a little bit of extra gold when you and an ally take down a nearby champion. Then for spells, you have Flash. I've talk you i'll talk to you a little bit later on about flash combos with alistar but there's a lot of flash combos that you could do with alistar which are really really helpful and then you have ignite as well with alistar you want to play aggressive as possible and ignite just gives you that little bit of extra damage as well Now it's time to take a look at Alistar's abilities. First up is his passive, which is Triumphant Roar. When Alistar takes damage, he heals himself for a little bit of health and nearby allied champions as well. Knocking up or stunning champions with Alistar's abilities reduces the cooldown by a few seconds. So when you take damage, as you'll see here, you can see underneath my mana bar, the bar is green. That means the passive is up and available. When I take damage from the tower. As you can see, there's a little heal effect and there's a little sound effect, which tells you that the passive has been proxed. And every time you knock up champions, you can see that the bar underneath the mana bar is going up and that's when you know that the passive is up and available again take damage from the tower heal up a little bit and every time i knock up someone the passive of the passive bar underneath the mana bar goes up so just a little tricks there that allow you to uh, know when the passive is up and available for the first ability we have pulverize you deal magic damage to nearby enemies and knock them up for a second i used the ability a few times already as you can see you can just knock up enemy champions you can knock up multiple champions at the same time as well uh, which is really really good for combos which i'll explain a little bit later on but again pretty self-explanatory ability nothing too crazy there moving on to the second ability headbutt dashes towards an enemy dealing magic damage and knocking them back and you can also target the towers as well which deals 75 percent damage so again 
You can just use the ability. You can aim the ability if you want to. You can tap the ability as well. It will depend what direction the enemy is towards you. It will headbutt in a direction. Or you can manually aim the ability as well if you want to. So you can headbutt champions. And then also, as it said, you can headbutt towers as well at the same time. It will do a little bit of damage, but most of the time you headbutt towers to try and get like a really cool combo with like flash and pulverize, which I'll explain a little bit later on. Tramble is Anastar's third ability, deals magic damage to nearby enemies for a few seconds. And if Tramble damages an enemy champion five times, Anastar's next attack within five seconds is empowered to deal additional magic damage and stun as well. Again, you have a little indicator for this ability. So when you use your third ability, you can see that I do damage around. And as you can see, if I move over an enemy champion, you can see that there's little chains underneath Alistar's um, kind of well underneath Alistar basically and when the chains go full the chain is lit up and as you can see I can auto attack afterwards to deal more damage and also stun the enemy champion as you can see I can move around and do it as well so you just have to kind of know the range of the third ability but again you can use this with combos as well to try and chain CC the enemy champions and then for last ability we have unbreakable will uh, which um, uh, removes crowd control and you gain a 75% damage reduction for a few seconds so if you do get crowd control if you do get hit by stuns or slows you can use your ultimate and as you can see unbreakable will i got a bunch of shields and everything around me as you can see i don't really take a lot of damage this is full build alistar in a late game as you can see you don't really take a lot of damage with ultimate <laughs> and everything as well just by the tower so you can see that you could definitely be a huge frontline tank The most important thing you need to know with Alistar is his combo. So I'm going to quickly run through a few quick combos now, just so you have a heads up before you head into your first game with Alistar. The most basic combo is with his headbutt and his pulverize, which is second ability and his first ability. When you headbutt, you just want to use your pulverize as soon as the headbutt goes towards the champion. And as you can see, instead of knocking the enemy champion away with headbutt, instead you use your pulverize to cancel the headbutt and you can knock up people instead. This is the most basic combo that you can use and it's really really nice you can also combo this with your third ability as well you can use your third ability straight after the pulverize and you can stay within auto attack range to try and proc the third ability as well you can do this as many times as you want to as you can see it's really really strong you can even use your third ability just before if you feel like you know you're going to go in straight away this will help you out a little bit but to be honest it's kind of the same a number of time depending on whether you activate the third ability after or before you can also combo your first ability with flash this means you can use your first ability and then use your flash straight afterwards and it, this will surprise enemies a lot as you can see here if i use my first ability of flash as you can see i can knock up enemy champions really really quickly this might take a few tries because you have to use flash really really quickly but all it is is just key flash and as you can see, you knock up enemies. This is a lot better than trying to flash Q because when you flash, there is a little bit of delay and there is a little bit of time for the enemy champions to try and flash or dash away. So if you Q flash, this gives the enemy champion a little time, uh, just a little amount of time to be able to react. And most of the time, they won't be able to react as well. And you can also combo this with your second ability as well. So if you Q flash, you can get behind the enemy champion and you can headbutt them towards a tower or towards your team as well. If you get this on a high value target, this will be really, really strong. Take a look through the skill order with Anastar. At level one, you could go for one of two abilities. I mostly like to go for the first ability, just because you can get that early knockup at level one. But sometimes it might be hard to get within range of a knockup. And if you do want to play safe, you can go for your second ability at level one. And at level two, you just want to go for the other ability. So whether you went for your second ability at level one, you can go for your first ability at level two and vice versa. So making sure you get that headbutt pulverized combo at level two, and then you can try to look to engage. Then for level three, you want to go for your tremble just to try and get the full combo up and available and then you want to max your first ability making sure that you reduce the cooldown of the headbutt pulverize combo is really really important and the pulverize is the most important part out of the two abilities and then as mentioned you know you go for pulverize first and then you want to max your second ability again it reduces a uh, cooldown and again it'll be really really nice to try and get as many headbutt pulverizes as you can and as you can see you want to level up your ultimate as soon as possible and then round it off with max in your third ability so that's everything you pretty much need to know with alistar i'm going to go into a gameplay now hopefully you will enjoy and i'll see you all in a second
All right, on to the gameplay. So we're going to play Alistar with Misfortune, and we're against Soraka and Zayu. You can see that they're pushing out the lane early on, which is actually not that bad for us. Most of the time with Alistar at level 1, especially gets the likes of like Zaya, Soraka, Nami, Lulu, Janna, champions like that. It's really, really hard for Alistar to do pretty much anything at level 1, and most of the time you have to play very, very passive. Until you reach level 2 and you can try and look for an engage. You know, champions like uh, Janna is a really good counter to Alistar. Thresh as well, because they can stop the headbutt pulverized combos. As you can see, Zayat's kind of helping us out in a way, pushing the um, pushing the minion waves. As you can see, we're level 2 now, so we can try and look for an engage. This is kind of your, your main part of Alistar, and your main kind of, I would say, power spike with Alistar. Um, because you'll be able to use that combo to try and... You know, proc your aftershot, be that little bit of a frontline tank that you can be, and try and do a little bit of damage. Most of the time, you'll you'll kind of lose trades, and Soraka can be annoying as well, because if you do try and headbutt Pulverize, uh, Soraka can just put the silence underneath her, and it can be really, really annoying. But as you can see here, I'm just playing passive early on. I'm trying to look for a headbutt Pulverize combo. As you can see here, I go in for a nice little trade. We do a nice little headbutt Pulverize combo. We get the proc of the Tramble as well. Honestly, it's a, not a bad trade for us, but as you can see, Camille is unfortunately here. And unfortunately, we do get first blooded. I try and headbutt the Camille under tower. I flash away. I was going to try and headbutt Camille as well. But unfortunately, I completely missed. But yeah, the one time I engage is unfortunately the one time that Camille ganks at level, uh, I think level 2 or level 3 that she was. So a little bit of an unfortunate start for us. Um, but yeah, that's just the timing. Obviously, we didn't have any vision in the river, which was kind of our mistake. So... Yeah, that's kind of the problem sometimes with Alistar is that when you do engage with Headbutt Pulverize, you don't really have any other ways to escape except for your Flash. So sometimes it can be a little bit of a problem. So you do need to be careful every time you do use your Headbutt Pulverize combo, just making sure that you'll be able to, you know, engage safely and make sure that you don't take a lot of damage. So we're against the likes of Vagar this game. I think I saw Kale and Camille as well. Um, so as you can see, I'm just sorting out my boots this game as well. So we're going to go for uh, Merc Treads this game because there is a lot of crowd control. you got the Zyre Roots. you got the Soraka Silence as well, which can root as well. Uh, Vagar's Cage, Kale Slow as well. Um, obviously Camille as well, which does a, um, has a little bit of a stun with her third ability. Um, so all these stuns and roots can be really, really annoying for us. Sometimes you can go for... Um, Plates of Steel Caps if you want to. Um, but this game, I didn't really see the point of Plates of Steel Caps. So as you can see, Zai's playing a little bit aggressive, but I'm trying to be a little bit careful at the same time as well. Trying to uh, defend my misfortune as much as possible. But as you can see, sometimes it's a little bit hard for Alistar during the lane phase. And this is kind of Alistar's weak point, especially against ranged supports as well in the lane phase. Most of the time, you can't really engage and you can't really do much. And most of the time, you're just in a bit of a stalemate. Uh, most of the time during the team fights is when Alistar really comes online. You see, I go for a headbutt pulverize here, um, but unfortunately they had the um, Zaya had the feathers available, which I didn't really look at. Which most of the time I normally say to people, watch out for the Zaya feathers. But unfortunately, I didn't there, so a little bit annoying. But uh, it is what it is. We did take a little bit more damage, and obviously with Soraka's heals as well at the same time, it's really really hard for us to actually try and you know do anything. Because Soraka's heals, it's just going to heal up all of my combos every single time. So, the first dragon's coming up very, very soon. Um, I think I'm walking up to try and get a ward here, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'm just trying to get a ward here. So, just warding the um, dragon part of the side of the map. So, the Infernal Drake is obviously really, really important. We're going to go back and we're going to get our Mercury Treads. Unfortunately, we're not able to get our um, proto belt but as you can see here i go for the move speed item early on with health so it's quite quite nice i normally start with ruby crystal with alistar just get a little bit of health early on just in case we get poked down and i upgrade it to the i think it's called winged something i can't really not really too sure but it gives you the extra move speed early on and then i go for the proto belt boots so it kind of denies your power spike of the proto belt boots early on but this is mainly what happens you know in uh, especially in high elo as well you can see that my misfortune actually stole the dragon which is really really nice you can see i use my head button i use my pulverize to defend the misfortune as much as possible i use a tramble as well unfortunately she dies but we do get the trade kill as well with the um with the camille which is really really nice i could have tried to maybe uh, pulverize beforehand and then headbutt afterwards, but because Camille was already doing so much damage to Misfortune, I just wanted to knock her back and I wanted to do as much uh, crowd control as possible, just so she does little, so, you know, as little bit of a damage as possible. Our jungler takes the mid lane tower, which is really, really nice. So yeah, most of the time you don't really need Proto Belt early on because most of the time, you know, you're not really um, engaging or you're not really fighting at the first dragon. It's not really 
the most important dragon, in my opinion, in the game. You can see I use my headbutt flash here, but unfortunately, I uh, I did a little bit of an int play there. Um, I think I actually flashed pulverized instead of pulverized flashed. And you can see how annoying the um, the silence can be for um, you know Soraka as well at the same time. But again, I, I kind of make my own mistake here. I don't look for the Zaya Feathers. You can see the Zaya Feathers. I try and flash pulverize, and I can't really do much. I can't really use my other abilities because of the silence field as well. Um, but again, I was really, really low on health. And um, yeah, a little bit of a mistake, but hopefully you can learn from my mistake as well. Um, because this was a, um, a pretty big mistake. As you can see, I'm going for Bramble Vest early on. Bramble Vest is really, really good in this matchup because they have Soraka. So when Zaya attacks me, she's gonna um, she's gonna get grievous wounds. So that means that Soraka's heals, uh, Soraka's heals, sorry, I uh, won't be able to heal as much, and the healing will be a little bit reduced. So yeah, a little bit of misplay for myself. Obviously, not looking out for the Zaya feathers, which most of the time I tell everyone to look out for the Zaya feathers, but I don't actually do it myself. Sometimes, as you can see, uh, sometimes it can be a um, a little bit of a problem but yeah again that, that just shows how hard it is sometimes for Alistar to engage especially you know against the likes of Zyra as well because she can just use her feathers straight afterwards you can see the root from the feathers on top of these Soraka silence as well and I can't move and I can't use any of my summoner spells and abilities so can be a little bit annoying uh you can see my Fiora is getting a little bit caught out here there's not really uh much we can do I not really much we can do in this situation I could try and knock the Zyra away to try and do as uh you know, as much, um, you know, try and defend my team as much as possible. But again, I, kind of the struggle of Alistar, again, you know, that Vagar cage was kind of the problem for us. We couldn't really engage. We didn't have Flash to try and Flash to help our Fiora. Um, so we had to stay back and we had to just do as much as we can. Obviously, I'm trying to dodge as many abilities as possible here. The silence field as well. I'm trying to knock away enemies and I'm just trying to survive. They did take the tower in the duo lane, which is a little bit unfortunate. You can see that the rest of my team is coming here to try and help out. I have my headbutt pulverized combo in a few seconds. But again, the Vagar cage, look, is just zoning us out every single time. And Vagar's another champion that's really, really annoying to play when you're playing with Alistar. Um, if, you know, the, the Vagon knows how to use the cage correctly, Alistar could just be completely zoned out and there's nothing really you can do. Um, the only thing I would maybe do differently in that previous team fight around the Dragon Pit is maybe um, go on to Desire a little bit earlier. Desire was kind of auto-attacking us for free. I was kind of a bit tunnel-visioned on our Fiora, just making sure that um, he doesn't die, but unfortunately he did die in the end. So yeah, a little bit unfortunate uh, in the end. We do get into a little bit of an early game disadvantage this game, but... We're still doing okay. Our Fiora is pretty strong. We got uh, towers as well. We got mid and top lane tower. You can see that I'm starting to roam around a little bit. Because the bot lane tower was taken, uh, most of the time you can use this opportunity to roam around. As you can see here, the uh, Viega is going to die. Really, really nice roam by the set from top lane. Um, I don't have my headbutt pulverized combo available, unfortunately. I felt like I kind of wasted it on the Vega, but I just wanted to make sure that he wasn't able to escape. And obviously, we got the assist from it as well. So we do get a little bit of extra gold. Kamal's trying to jump in as well. I'm just using my tremble. Sometimes you could do this. Sometimes you can use the tremble. The third ability is kind of the zoning tool. Because when you use a tremble, that means that the enemy champions can't really dive on top of you. Because if they do, and if you proc the passive for tremble, then obviously you can stun them. You can pulverize them, headbutt them as well. Uh, so it can be a little bit annoying. So we went for the Bramble Vest, which means that we're not, we haven't got our first item yet, but the Bramble Vest this game was really, really important, um, especially for, you know, the likes of Soraka, especially because we're going to be that frontline tank, tank as well. So when champions also attack us, um, they will have reduced healing from Soraka. So again, another situation. We're kind of stuck at the moment. I'm using my Flash um, Headbutt or Flash Pulverize, I should say to um, knock up the Vega, and it's kind of one of the situations where you have to use your flash because when I'm stuck in the cage like that, sometimes it can be a pretty annoying. Uh, unfortunately, with the Camille, she was able to escape. She was able to use the head. Uh, she, uh, she was able to use the hook shot. Sorry, um, to be able to escape from my pulverize, which is a little bit unfortunate. But yeah, we was able to take the Vega in the end. We was able to uh, to take her down. Um, unfortunately, I was trying to use my Protobelt to get behind the Vagar, and I was going to try and headbutt the um, Vagar into my team. Uh, but I had a little bit of a misplay there. As you can see, I'm, I'm not perfect with every single champion. You can see that I make mistakes as well, but hopefully you can learn from my mistakes as well, which is kind of the um, the purpose of me, you know, breaking down these videos. Um, just so I can explain what my thought process was and explain of what combos I'm doing at what times. Um, obviously, in the river there around the, uh, the dragon, I was trying to... 
flash pulverize and then after my flash pulverize i was going to proto out behind and then headbutt the vegar into my team unfortunately the headbutt i think headbutted the vegar away i'm not vegar sorry the uh ko away but again the you know headbutting the ko away actually wasn't a bad thing as well and um, so here i'm headbutting the ko away and i'm pulverizing the camille trying to defend my misfortune but unfortunately both of them use flashes and unfortunately we weren't able to uh, defend our misfortune. But again, sometimes you can use this. Sometimes you can use your headbutt. You can use your pulverize to defend your team. Most of the time, it doesn't have to be used as an engage tool if you don't want it to be. You can use it as kind of a defensive tool for to help your AD carry. But in that instance, unfortunately, both Camille and Kale both had flash. So unfortunately, we weren't able to defend our misfortune. But it's the thought that counts, right? It's the thought that counts. So making sure that we... Uh, we try and defend our, our AD carry as much as possible is just as important as engaging and being that frontline tank at the same time. So we're going back to base now. Uh, we're going to go for the Zeke's Convergence as our second item. So I believe I go for the uh, Magic Resist here. Yeah, I go for the Magic Resist because Kale is a little bit annoying at the moment. You also have the Soraka does a little bit of AP damage and also Vegas. They do have a lot of AP damage. So I wanted a little Magic Resist to help us out. Uh, fortunately, our team gets a little bit caught out here. Uh, I go in to just combo the Kale to try and combo it with the Misfortune. You see Kale goes a little bit too deep here and she doesn't know about the Bramble passive. So I stun her under tower and we do get the Camille as as well it's a little bit of an overstep from the enemy team but again you know using your ultimate using your headbutt pulverize combo you can see that i don't really take a lot of damage with alistar and kale went a little bit too deep i was able to proc the bramble passive while she was taking tower aggro as you can see here as well using my protobelt to reduce the range for headbutt pulverize and i actually kill the zaya another really really cool combo that i didn't really mention that you can do um you can protobelt and then headbutt pulverize afterwards and again another cool situation there you can pulverize and headbutt people away as well to safety i dodged all of vegar's abilities as well so nice little play there that you can uh, you can kind of rewind if you want to to kind of break it down so uh, you can see that Alistar does a little bit of damage as well. Even though you're building full tank with Alistar, he still can do a lot of damage. I go for the Glacial Shroud now. Um, so I don't really go for the, uh, um, you know, MR upgrade for the Zeke's Convergence. I probably should have, to be fair, just to get more magic resist. Because I think magic resist is the main problem this game. But Zaya is also fed at the same time. So it can be... Uh, can be a bit of a 50-50 depending on what you can go, uh, what you want you uh, what you want to go. Sorry, uh, you can see sets in the top lane, uh, being the boss as he needs to be up in the top lane, um, do really really well, just distracting the team. You see at the moment we're grouping around mid lane. Uh, Camille was trying to split push in the bot lane at the moment, um, but. Most of the time, you want to try and get that mid lane priority. You can see Dragon is up in 8 seconds. We're trying to catch up the Camille, maybe trying to look for a flank in behind. But unfortunately, the tower is still there, so there's nothing really we can do about that one. Uh, the Dragon is up and available. Uh, we do get the Scuttle Crab as well. Again, we're looking for that mid lane priority, trying to push the mid lane as much as possible. Uh, I think the Fiora has um, Herald available. There you go. Uses the Herald for mid lane as that distraction point. As you can see... Uh, Vagar gets caught by the headbutt pul uh, get gets caught by the dark binding. I headbutt pulverize the um, Zaya. I try and tower dive. This is a little bit too deep. As you can see, the healing from Soraka, even with my Bramble Vest, is really, really strong. And unfortunately, we do go a little bit too deep. We try to we try to help the uh, the Fiora and try to tower dive the Zaya. But as you can see, you know, the Zaya is so so strong with all the healing from soraka at the same time another headbutt pulverize here onto zaya and again the healing of soraka is so so annoying so even with the bramble vest at the moment i feel like we uh we need some more healing reduction on our team whether it be um you know executioner's calling calling from our misfortune uh or even executioner's calling from them um, set or anything like that as well and as you can see i i say to them you know we need more anti-heal we need more bramble vest or you know, Oblivion Orb as well by our mid laner could also be really, really important because we really need to reduce the healing of this Soraka. Because so, as you can see, Zaya was like 1 HP and if they didn't have a Soraka, they would have been completely fine. But obviously with the Soraka, um, she was able to heal up to pretty much 4 HP and um, yeah, able to kill us off. So a little bit of a fortunate tower dive there. A um, little bit unfortunate, but um, you know, we're still in a reasonable gold lead. You can see our top lane, our, our jungle at the moment is still really, really strong. Uh, we're going to go for the Force of Nature as our th um, third item. Uh, we're not going to complete the 4 mail just yet because I feel like we need some more magic resist for ourselves. 
Um, they do take the dragon, but to be honest, it's not the end of the world. It's only Mountain Dragon. Uh, you can see Camille here trying to jump on Armor's Fortune. So I use the headbutt to knock Camille away. And I think I try and headbutt Pulverize here. No, I think just does enough no, does enough damage. I use the Pulverize headbutt here and knock Zaya into the Fiora. As you can see, instead of Fiora wrapping array around, Fiora is able to jump onto the Zaya. I use Ignite as well. That's a nice, easy kill onto the Zaya. You can see as well, you know, the combos that I'm doing throughout this whole game. Again, using the Proton Bot to reduce the distance between me and the enemy champion. And then Headbutt Pulverizer afterwards, which was really, really helpful. Um, and being able... Um, uh, for us being able to uh, help our teammates in crowd control. Unfortunately, wasn't able to help the set out, but we still did quite well trying to uh, do well against the... Um, you know, do well at trying to pick out the uh, the KO in the end. So, again, a few other cool combos there. You can see I used the Pulverize um, Flash combo. And I headbutted the uh, Zaya into my team. That's what I was doing, trying to do before with the Vega. Unfortunately, I kind of misclicked a little bit. So, again, a little bit of an overstep by the enemy team. Allows us to take Baron Nasha. Um, which is really, really nice. So you can see, you know, my early game, this game wasn't really too great. I did kind of make a few um, few misplays. But when you get into the mid and the late game with Alistar, this is where he really thrives. Um, when you can be that frontline tank and when you can be, you know, that first engaged tool for your team. It allows your team to follow up and just do a lot of damage. Which is what Alistar is known for and what Alistar is really good at. Obviously, the early game can be really, really tough for Alistar. Because, you know, he, he's not really that tanky. Um, there are a lot of abilities that can counter Alistar in the early game as well. But when you get a few items under your belt, uh, once you get, you know, once you get that frontline tankiness that you um, that you need, and once you get a few points in your ultimate as well, as you can see, I'm level 13, so I have all my points in my ultimate to take the reduced damage, um, which gets increased after every rank as well. See, I'm trying to roam around the map at the moment. That's kind of what you want to do with Alistar. Roaming around the map is really really nice. Uh, sometimes you could take like Pathfinder uh, if you want to on Alistar. Um, Pathfinder is quite nice to be able to roam around the map, but Pack Ops is also good as well because it gives you that movement speed when nearby um, allied champions. You can see we're pushing the bot wave at the moment. Um, our team are pushing the mid wave and the top wave as well. It's most of the time what you want to do with the um, Baron buff minions. You can see I just use my headbutt to headbutt Zyra away so she can't auto attack the um, super minions. If you're just trying to. Uh, to flank as well with the misfortune as you see i'm trying to look for a tower dive and at the same time i'm trying to look for not look for tower dive uh, we do take the top inhib as well with the set which is quite nice for your roams to the bot lane we take the bot lane in the, uh, bot lane tower as well we're trying to go for the mid lane the hib at the same time i'm like okay i need to help this set out here so what i do here i use my ultimate a little bit too early but again i use my pulverized headbutt I knock the Zaya into the team, and even though she does have the um, ultimate available, I can use the Protobelt and use the E straight afterwards to kill her. But I think I used my ultimate, unfortunately, a little bit too early. I was trying to ultimate and then use my Headbutt Pulverize straight afterwards, but unfortunately, they killed the set pretty damn quickly, to be honest. But as you can see, the Fiora, just doing the Fiora things here, and just 1v9ing onto the back line. There you go. Getting a nice and easy quadra kill. And I'm pretty sure the game pretty much ends here. I think Fiora, which is uh, Keys, is like, oh, I've got all this pressure on me. I need to try and end the game. He's like, I can't end the game. I can't. I can end the game. i got so much pressure. Everyone's watching me. I'm the only one alive. Yeah, I think, as you can see, eventually, he uh, he doesn't finish the game, as you can see. He's, he keeps saying, taking tower aggro. He's like, I can't finish. I can finish. Oh, I'm fine. <laughs> So, he's all good. There you go. And uh, he does finish the game off. So, again, some, some cool combos there you can use with Alistar. But, again, at the same time, it kind of shows Alistar's weaknesses. Alistar can struggle a lot, especially in the laner phase, as you saw in this game. You know, if you're against ranged supports, I wouldn't really recommend picking Alistar. But as you can see, when you get to the mid and late game, he can be uh, pretty strong. And he can do a lot of damage at the same time. But that's it for today's guide. Hopefully, you all enjoyed. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, make sure you stay tuned for the next guide, which will be... The Sad Mummy Amumu, which I have some, uh, some very interesting games for that one. So stay tuned and hopefully I'll see you all very soon. Peace.